So I am thinking about buying the most expensive <laughs> camera that I've ever bought. My dream camera, the Airy Alexa Mini LF. This thing is coveted by all filmmakers. Many say it's the greatest camera ever made. It's used on shows like House of the Dragon, the new Lord of the Rings show. Pretty much every Oscar nominated film used it from Tar to All Quiet on the Western Front, Elvis, Empire of Light. If it's good enough for Roger Deakins, it is definitely good enough for me. There's only one big, big problem. It costs $90 thousand dollars American for us Canadians that's a big deal and even though I'd be buying it used it's still by far the most expensive piece of camera gear I've ever bought and it kind of really scares me you guys think I should do it I'm not much of a impulse buyer and it usually takes me like weeks of thinking whether or not I should do something like this so Let's take out all of the emotion, all of the hype, all of the fear, and figure out should I buy the Airy Alexa Mini LF? And you can use the same framework to figure out whether or not you should be buying this or that piece of gear. The first and by far the most important question we need to ask is, can you afford it? Do you have the money to buy it and still be able to pay all your bills in life? And if you can't afford it, it's an easy decision that's a for sure no. And don't be putting it on your credit card unless you can pay off that credit card immediately. I don't think it's worth that kind of risk. So if you don't have the money, don't buy it. If you do have the money, okay, great. Now there is the other option of can you borrow the money? Can you loan the money from somewhere? But then you have to calculate the cost of the whole thing with interest and all that. How much is that gonna actually cost you and can you afford that? and still pay all your bills. I'm not a huge fan of taking loans for camera gear. I think you should just work your way up. If you can afford it, great. If you can't, nope. For me, I'm buying it used. I'm getting a pretty good deal on it and I've saved up a good amount of money so I can afford it. We're good to go there. Next, we need to ask ourselves, do you need it? And if we're talking about the <laughs> Aerie Alexa Mini LF for me and YouTube, that's a no, I definitely don't need it for YouTube videos. That is massively, massively overkill. And it's actually probably gonna just like hurt my workflow. It doesn't have autofocus, it's bigger, it's clunkier, it's a little bit harder to deal with. So for my YouTube videos, I'd say no. But we do wanna create feature films this year. We wanna produce those. We wanna make the Being series. We wanna continue that and make it like a high quality Netflix style docu-series. And for those, yeah, I think we kind of do need it. Now we, we, could, we could do things with the C300 or other cameras, but if we're gonna go through all of the trouble and hard work of making something like a feature film, we might as well upgrade to the camera that we actually wanna use. Um, so yeah, I think it does enable certain things for us, but I also think it would be a great learning experience for me to get really comfortable with the Airy cameras. I haven't had enough experience with them, and if I own it, I can use it anytime I want, and I can use it for more shoots, and I feel like I can get really comfortable with it and just learn about the whole Airy system more, which I don't think I could do as well if I didn't own it. And that's because I'm not on set every week. I'm not naturally getting exposed to it. I personally right now have to kind of choose to be exposed to it. But I would say this is my biggest gamble. If we don't make any feature films, if we don't do the Being series, then I'm gonna have a very expensive <laughs> decoration on my shelf. I mean, at least I'd have some cool YouTube videos to make from it. That leads us to number three. Will you make money from it or are you just gonna lose a ton? So right now, the Aerie Alexa Mini LF rents for about $1,200. Let's go conservative and stick with the $1,000. If we're, let's say, shooting a feature film, let's say we're shooting for about 30 days, which is probably fairly short, that's gonna be $30,000 of rentals that we're saving or I'd be making. And the same goes with the Being series. If we're doing that, let's say we shoot for, I don't know, 15 days this year, that's $15,000 of rentals. 
that I'd be saving and therefore kind of like making money or paying off the camera. Now, if I was a working DP, I could also have a day rate plus my camera package could come along with me so I could make more money from that, but I'm not a DP right now, so that's not gonna work for me. But there's also a thing called consignment, and that's when I would hand this camera over to a rental house and they would take care of it, clean it, make sure it's all good, and then rent it out to people and we would split the profits there. So let's say I put it in a rental house and let's say very conservatively it gets rented out five days a month. That's gonna be, let's say around $2,500 for me if we're going 50-50 on it. Times that by 12 months, I'd be making around $30,000 from my camera, it's like a passive income stream. And again, I could pay off the camera or maybe even be actually making money from this camera. That would be dream scenario, but that is definitely not guaranteed. And if I'm buying it used, it's already depreciated quite a bit. So it's not gonna depreciate that much. People are still using the original Airy minis, not even the LF version. They're using the original minis. For example, on the best movie made this last year, Everything Everywhere All at Once, incredible movie filmed on the Airy mini, not the LF. And so I think the LF version is gonna keep its price fairly well still. I think it's gonna be used for many years to come. So even if I wanted to then later, maybe a year or two from now, sell it off, I don't think I would lose that much money. Now this depends completely depending on what gear you're talking about. Some things depreciate really fast, like mirrorless or DSLR camera bodies. I find that they decrease in value really fast because they're constantly bringing out new ones. Whereas Airy is not updating cameras all the time. Now they are coming out with a new sensor. They already have it on the Airy 35, which is a super 35 camera, and they'll slowly start rolling it out into the other cameras. But like I said, everything everywhere all at once still used the older Alexa Mini. So I think it's still going to be quite useful for many years to come. Then you need to ask yourself if you do need it, can you just rent it? Do you need it that badly? Do you need it all the time? And here's kind of like a gray area, I would say. You can kind of convince yourself to go either or. But I would say for me, I think I'll get enough use for it that I can kind of pay itself off. Plus if I was renting, I wouldn't be using it for like YouTube videos and extra things other than the bigger projects. So I wouldn't have it around here and I don't think I would learn enough about it just on the shoot days when everything is crazy and I'm trying to do a million different things. Also, there is something to just being really excited about a new piece of gear and I feel like if I rented it, I wouldn't have that same excitement to use it and learn about it and all that stuff. I think if I buy it, in this case for me personally, this is different for everybody else, I think I'm gonna be much more inspired to create and make stuff and that, that has a value to it. It's hard to calculate but it's definitely valuable. Okay, we're doing pretty good so far, but we also wanna do research and ask around, ask our friends, other professionals, what they think. So I asked some DPs that I know what they thought about it. I asked some directors what they thought about it. Have they worked with it? Did they like it? Would they use it on feature films? For example, Ryan Booth, one of the guys that I really wanna make some features with. Ryan, do you like it? Would you use it on your feature film? If he was like, nah, hate it. Okay, interesting. If he was like, I love it. Okay, cool. I asked rental houses, would you rent this out for me? How much is it getting rented out? Is it popular? Trying to figure out gauging, is this a good deal? Even just asking, is this a good price? Should I be paying this much or is this a bad deal? And in this case, every single person I talked to was like, this is a pretty good deal. The price is right, it's a great camera, everybody's loving it and it's being used a lot. So, that's looking pretty good, but there's many times where you ask around and they're like, I don't know, and you can be pretty quickly talked out of it and your hype can kind of be brought down to a more healthy level. And kind of along with that, I would look at the broader landscape of filmmaking and see how are they using that tool. Certain cameras get used a ton, and so that's kind of a safe bet, whereas other cameras might be a little bit obscure and a production might be a little bit too wary of the risk of using a camera that they haven't really worked with before or haven't really heard of, even though it might be a great camera, but they might not wanna use that. Just like back in the day when I bought my first cinema camera, the C300 Mark II, it wasn't the like kind of like the most specced out with all the bells and whistles camera, 
but they were very popular on like kind of like the mid-level, smaller level productions that I was working on and especially on documentaries, which I love documentaries and I wanted to shoot more documentaries. So I ended up going with the C300 Mark II instead of the more specced out, I think it was the FX9 at that point or FX7. It had way more specs and like fanciness in a way but the Canon was way more used, so I thought the Canon was a safer bet, even though on paper it kind of didn't make sense to pay more for the Canon versus the Sony where you got a lot more specs. In this case, again, just judging by all the feature films, the best movies made this last year, pretty much everybody is using Aries and the LF is being used at some point in there. Uh, so I think it's a fairly popular camera and I think it'll be still used for at least a few more years. And lastly, after you've done all of this and you've made some conclusions, don't buy it still. Just sit on it, take a few days, take your time, cause things can change pretty quickly. And I would even go through these again just to make sure you weren't, you know, being skewed or biased by your hype that you're just so excited to get it. Really take your time, especially the bigger the investment, the longer you should take on figuring out if you should get it or not. Often, me personally, I get hyped on something and then a few days later I'm like, I, why, I don't, I don't need that. That's not, that's not a good idea. I'm barely gonna use it. I don't, it's just gonna be a waste of money. Usually I feel like I'm just kind of getting bored with my gear and so I just wanna add something fun to it, but it might not actually be a good idea. In this case, it's looking like it's a good idea, but I'm still very, very scared. What do you guys think? Should I make the craziest filmmaker investment and buy the Aerie Alexa Mini LF, my dream camera? Thumbs up for yes, and you wanna see what happens. Thumbs down for that's a stupid idea. It's just gonna end up on your shelf. Let me know. I don't know what to do. Ah! I really want it though, but I don't know. Okay. Bye.